Hey guys. So you know what I love about being home? I love TV. I fucking love TV. And American TV is awesome. Um, and these are like older shows that I've been watching. But I can't get enough of Malcolm in the Middle and Third Rock from the Sun. So that's what's on the television right now. And I have to, if I don't turn it off, I'm going to keep looking at the television. And irritate me. Okay, so my dad asked me about my wiener. Or whatever. Okay, so this is how it came up. I guess I had said in passing that I wasn't planning on having lower surgery and that thought really festered with him and he couldn't understand why uh why I wouldn't and he said because then you're not really a boy or a girl like if you go through all of this and then you don't have lower surgery and I was like well maybe I should have clarified my surgical options are really limiting and I can either have a baby dick or a Frankenstein dick and I don't want either so yeah <laughs> you know um and that is true. Like, that's part of my reasoning for not pursuing, like, lower surgery. Or at least right now. Like, that's... I'm fine with that. Um, but I didn't necessarily volunteer a procedure that I am interested in. Which is the clitoral release. Clitoris release. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. But um, it's when you, like, kind of just snip the, the skin attaching your clit to the rest. Right? So... Like, you can have a freestanding erection. But I didn't I didn't mention that as, like, an option that I am interested in. Because I would have had to get into detail about, like, planning to take DHT cream just for junk growth. And I suppose, like, I'm only willing to talk about my desire to have an erection on the internet. Not with my dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, yeah, he was curious about that and why I wouldn't look into... Or plan on having that procedure. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's really expensive. And there's a lot of risk involved. And there can be muscle death. And you can have a total loss of erotic sensation. And there's a point in time where you just have to reconcile yourself. And I'm a trans man. I have to reconcile myself with not having a biological penis. That's my reality. Um, if I was a trans woman, that that wouldn't necessarily be my reality. I could you know, have the intention of having a vagina that looks and reacts and, re you know, everything about it is a vagina. But is it, I don't know, is this true? I read somewhere that trans women's vaginas either have two options for, like, secretion. Either you're always wet or you're never wet. Did it, is that correct? Does anyone, does anyone have a new vagina who could tell me that or um, knows the answer to that question? Uh, curious. So yeah, um, I, I, so when I was talking about it with my dad, I kind of made it sound like my, my decision to not have lower surgery was surgical, like, result-based. And it, that has part to, that's partly it. And the other part is I don't know if I'm, I'm not necessarily cock-identified. Um, I'm not con identified either, so, I don't know. I don't know, maybe my... My plans will change as I'm farther along in my medical transition, but for right now, you know, um, I just kind of made peace with with what my options are. And, and I don't know statistics or anything, but I was telling him that a lot of trans guys that I know seem to have to go through the same process of, like, reconciling limitations. So a trans guy with, like, maybe you're not vaginally identify I don't know but you know most it seems like 85% or so guys um that I've con like been in contact with have no intention of lower surgery and I I do like I said I do want to have like the release um but it's like I don't know it's like $14,000 so I don't envision that anytime soon and um I need to get some DHT cream right but I'm gonna do that sooner than later I, within the month I think so, anyway, yeah, my dad was asking me about that, and that was a little awkward. And um, and then when we were talking, I mentioned that uh, my godmother has a, a trans man friend who is married to a woman. And I said, and so he's straight. And my dad was just like, but wait, isn't, doesn't that, isn't the wife a lesbian? Because he has a hard time, like, saying the man, like, his wife or pronouns, but isn't the wife a lesbian then? It, because they can't have straight sex. And I was like, well, who you're with doesn't really dictate your 
sexual orientation. So no, she's not a lesbian, and her partner doesn't identify as anything female related, so they would not be in a, a lesbian relationship. And he was like hung up, he was like, yeah, but they don't have straight sex. And I was like, yeah, I guess so, but then you have to think about like biological men who have had like penile cancer or some like horrific accident or like they no longer have a penis. Does that mean that the wife that they've been married to for 25 years is like now becomes like a lesbian relationship because their sexual dynamics have changed? Um, that's a gray area. And so I think it's really like, you know, tricky to try to qualify and quantify all of that. But, um, for the most part, trans men don't want to be seen as having a lesbian relationship if they're with women, you know? Like, it's kind of, like, a insulting. Um, it's not insulting to me. I don't care what you think. But, um, yeah, that's that's the way it is, you know? Like, a trans guy may identify as a trans guy or as a guy, but um, not as a lesbian, which is, like, or butch. Like, I know some trans guys are just, like, have a butch identity. But, anyway, it's interesting. And so that was, like, blowing his mind to think about, like, a biologically, like, a, a biological male and a biological female and the male no longer has a penis or the ability to have an erection or, uh, like, I was like, so guys with prostate cancer and they can't get erect and they don't have sex, you know, that way, but they still have, like, penetration sex, like, with their partner, that doesn't make them a lesbian because they can't use their penis, you know, like, it's funny when you think about, like, all these, like, little loopholes that you've never thought about before, because you've never had to, you know, and then when I had said, um, in passing, too, like, just kind of off, off-handedly said, well, there are lesbians with penises, and he was like, what the hell are you talking about? I was like, there are, there are gay trans people, too, like, there are trans women who are lesbians, and so, and maybe they're pre-surgery, maybe they have, like, no intention on having like SRS um so they're just a lesbian with a penis and they're trans men with vaginas and have no intention on having lower surgery but they identify as gay and like want to date other male identified people um and that just blew his mind and I didn't like volunteer that I'd been dating guys for a little while now um it's funny because I've come out as gay like well as like female body dating other female bodied people. I was never really comfortable with lesbian, but came out as gay and now I've come out as trans, like a trans man, but I, I, coming out as like a gay trans man to certain people is a little intimidating, you know? Especially like people are like, but you were a lesbian. And I'm like, yeah, not so much. Like I was queer and I think for me, like I dated women because it put me in like a masculine role. I was always a lot more butch than my girlfriend so um that I think the gender role kind of defaulted me into a lesbian relationship but that's anyway that's not what we got into but he did ask me about my wiener plans and I just had to just like kind of blow it off I didn't blow it off I answered him but I didn't offer all of my insights about wieners and trans men and all of that, but anyway, it's kind of funny, a funny conversation. Um, my house smells like Christmas tree. Not because we have a real Christmas tree, my dad does fake Christmas trees, but because I have a candle burning in the background, <laughs> and it smells like a pine tree. Okay, I'm gonna use some chicken.